Hello there. Since you have managed to show up for part 3, I can only assume that you're curious of the methods for earning legit pitas, or you just miss my totally soothing voice. All jokes aside though, this is part 2 of the castle in Resident Evil 4. We left off in the segment just after the skull-headed cultist dropped his key, and we quickly stole it. Go all the way to the locked door and go through it. Salazar's men will try and attack you. If you have any sniper ammo, use it to get easy criticals on all the enemies near you. Try not to miss, and if you do, avoid getting completely annihilated by any sights. This room is actually pretty self-explanatory. Don't forget to pick up the spindle on the chair, and the yellow herb in the small staircase area next to the room. After that, avoid getting blown into nothing by the cultists wielding RPGs. Why do they have them? I have no idea, but a tip for when they teleport in front of the door, after you click the button, is to let the door close. They will waste the RPG shot, and this time, they won't have infinite ammo. Pick up the stone piece and run from, or take down, the enemies that rush you afterwards. Once you reach the next room, you could either save or continue down the hallway. Ignore the birds, as their loot will just fall when you shoot them, and fire down the spindle instead. After going through the next door, don't make the same mistake I did, and instead shoot the birds at the fountain, or better yet use a flash grenade instead of getting too close and letting them all fly away. Aside from the birds, there's also several small pieces of loot on the fountain itself. This room near the fountain that is locked? Remember it. We'll be coming back later to open it. If you have made it this far, make sure you to like and subscribe with notifications on for more content like this, and don't forget to turn on the bell. Continue to the next gate by breaking through all the barrels. A little reminder, keep your inventory organized and your guns loaded so you don't accidentally get stuck with an empty magazine. This next area can be insanely infuriating, especially if you're inexperienced. There's not much to explain though, just make sure to fully explore the maze without dying to the dogs. There would be a yellow herb, a red gem, a first aid spray, and the two moonstone halves among other things. After unlocking the door with the moonstones, you will run into Ada again. After the cutscene is over, you can break the pot for a spinner and find the merchant in the room directly next to the bed. Now we love the merchant all, but he clearly sees us picking up an expensive looking treasure and thinks nothing of it, even allowing us to sell it right back to him for 12,000 pitas. But, I don't know, maybe he's this really nice lad. Is that all? Is that all? Thank you. Ah, <laughs> thank you. Once you venture into the dining room, there would be a lot of small pieces of loot such as ammo and heals to obtain. To unlock the door, click the bell and fire out the wine on the pop-up board. Now when entering the room, you could try running around the trap, however it won't work and you'll be forced to fight a guard room in close proximity. Now this would be a problem if you couldn't break the lock. If you time the movements just right, you could break out of the cage with no damage from the cultist or the guard. It will take 5 hits from your knife to break the lock, as this one is more heavy duty than any of the locks you have seen so far. Flee back into the dining room to give you more space, and to force the cultist into a one person space in the doorway. Grab a double headshot and continue picking off enemies as they chase after you. Now be patient here and slowly take down the guard door by firing at its parasite when his back is turned. If the guard door gets too close, don't turn and run as he will hear you and rush right towards your location. Instead, walk backwards. Walking backwards is slightly faster than normal walking and is also quieter than running. 
The only time you should dash is right after you shoot the exposed parasite. If you're lucky, you won't get this glitch where he psychs you out and turns around instantly for a dash. Why are you bullying me? After dealing with them, go back to the chest in the cage and open it. Inside is a treasure that you can sell right away for a hefty amount of PVs. There isn't much to save for the next room. Just kill the enemies and take the RPG. Continuing to the next area, the merchant offers you the ability to purchase an XL size case, but don't buy it as you won't need it. After grieving over Lewis's unneeded death, loot the bots around the room and take the 5,000 pitas behind the porch of Sadler. Accidentally kill Ashley, reloot the room, and start her segment. You have a chance to save here, otherwise grab another yellow herb and pass through the short hallway. There's barely any loot in here, and grabbing the spindle from the drawer and pitas from the cabinet is more trouble than it's worth for two cultists. But I grab it anyway. After burning yourself with a candle for some random reason, turn the cranks and head through the gate. Grab the red herb and turn right. You'll be coming back to the room on the left anyway, so it doesn't matter. Solve the puzzle and make your way through the next hallway. After going down the stairs, you can solve the next puzzle, inserting the final tablet to complete it. Grab the bangle, family insignia, and another stone piece. Run past the knights. They're way too slow to really be a problem. Dodge the forced quick time events and make it to the previous room that we skipped before. We are rewarded free pitas for our troubles and go through the final doorway to meet up with Liam again. Now, make sure you don't heal Ashley in her segment, even if you take damage. If you make it back to Leon, he can take all the items she picked up and her health will replenish anyway. Against your better judgment, Leave Ashley alone and travel across the flaming pit of lava into the next room. If you're lucky enough to have pistol ammo, you can shoot down the cultist leaders on the dragon podiums to make them fall right away. Doing so will give you one chest for 5,000 pitas and another chest for Illuminato's pendant. Psych out the red cloaked cultists and shoot down the final dragon podium to get the final piece for the wall scripture. Head back to Ashley and ride the cart back to an area you've been before. After inserting the stone pieces into the wall, head back on the cart and go to the room where you fought the Garudoi. There will be new spawn enemies in here now. Kill them or run past them, and turn through the next room near the wine board. In here there will be 5,000 pitas free to take, and there will be a door that you can unlock to backtrack to that room near the fountain. Have Ashley climb on your back. She will unlock the door for you, and you will be able to get an elegant perfume bottle, free pitas, and a free butterfly magnum. After heading back to the main area, turn left into the base plate room with the hidden trap. Disable it and run through the next room. Save Ashley from the wooden drill and check the cabinet for the chessboard. Get the Queen's Grail and head back to the main room. This time, take the right path, pick up the yellow herb and the spindle. 
When going through the door, make Ashley wait, as she will wait. only get in the way. Luckily enough, no Ganados will sneak into the hallway together, so she could safely wait in the hallway while you fight all the knights. A base butterfly magnum is strong enough to take out a knight's helmet in one shot, even on professional. Even the stronger knights can lose their helmets in one go. No, that's a lot of damage! If I didn't miss one of the bullets here, I could have taken out all the knights with one magazine and two flashbangs, saving me plenty of ammo. Now, it could be hard to notice, but there's a small door where you can find the merchant and another shooting range. Go ahead and use this opportunity to sell whatever you may need to and do the next shooting range. Remember, if you miss one, there would be a chance to catch up. Welcome. Leave the room and go down the middle path. If your sniper isn't completely dry of ammo, use it to take out the guards at the gate. Don't forget to shoot all the little items off of the statues. Insert the grails into their respective hands and enter through the gate. Be careful breaking the pots here, as one of them has a snake in it. For pure satisfaction, you could take down the bug hive before even starting the cutscene. It falls and drops a ton of loot. There's another butterfly lamp here, but I forgot about it during my run through. Make sure you shoot the bugs when they're flying in the air, as this will make them die instantly. Avoid getting a soft lock and maybe just restart it if it happens, so you won't have to use all of your healing items. Collect the eyes that the hive and the bug drop before heading to the next area. As a final sell for this episode, pawn off all of your elegant masks to the merchant with the green, red, and purple gem all combined into it for 20,000 pitas. Just in this segment alone, we have managed to accumulate 300,000 more pitas, and there's still plenty to be made. If you'd be interested, make sure to like the video and comment below. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you on the next one.